Well, this next reaction is called 1, 2, and 1, 4 addition to conjugated dienes. Uh, you may remember a reaction from last semester where we have a double bond like this and add H, Br. And recall the first step of that reaction is that we grab that proton and kick off bromide. And then what we form is a carbocation, right? And if you recall, the carbocation exists at the most stable position. So that would be your tertiary position here. And then bromide would come in next here and attack. So in this case, you would just get that for your final product. Well, 1, 2, and 1, 4 addition is not dissimilar to this in the sense that we want to generate an intermediate that's the most stable. So let's go about this the following way. Let's look down here and look at 1, 2, and 1, 4 addition. So there's two steps. So step one will be the same for both of these types of addition. So step one is the 1 addition, right? So it's 1, 2, and 1, 4. So the 1 addition we're going to come over and we're going to grab that H and then we're going to kick off bromide. All right. Now the plus charge is going to go at the second position because that position right here is allylic. Right? And then through resonance we get this other structure. Now there's one other structure that we get here, and that is this fellow. So we get cis and trans with that internal alkene. But in any case, we end up getting um, a positive charge here on the second position, or, right, look, one, two, three, are the fourth position. Okay. Now the second step is going to be easy. It's just going to be bromide coming in and grabbing a hold of that positive charge. But it can do it either at this second position that leads to 1, 2, or it can do it at this fourth position right here. That'll give you 1, 4. So if you look at the reaction, it's similar to things that we would have seen for like in SN1. We have SP2 hybridized carbon at number two here, bromide attack. If it attacks the front p orbital, then you get the bromo group pointing out. And the back p orbital, you get the bromo group pointing back. All right, so that's your 1-2 um, addition. And then we look down here at our 1-4 addition. So it's the same idea, right? We come over here, we grab a hold of carbon number four. There's your 1-4 product. And the way we get this other one is that we take the other resonance form, right? And then bromide would come over and do this. All right, so that would give you this product right here. So together, when we look at these, we end up getting these products here. And this, like that describes all of the possibilities. So the question is, does one predominate? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So it turns out that we can control which product is formed here by using temperature. But before we get into that, I want to take a look and I want to ask you about that intermediate up above. So step one, the one addition. So we have we have this carbocation here. It's like a secondary, right, allylic. And then we have a primary allylic over on this side. They're both allylic, so they're both stable in that regard. But the secondary allylic, because it's more substituted, is a greater resonance contributor. So this guy is a greater resonance contributor. So remember when we have resonance that none of the structures really represent the real structure. So it's kind of a weighted average, right? So that guy exists more 
than the other two resonant structures. All right now, when we come down and we look at all the products, um, one set of products is more stable than the other set of products. Let's talk about that. Well, stability is going to be dependent mostly here on the degree of substitution. So these are both mono substituted, and this double bond is di substituted. So that's going to be a more stable product. So there's two things to talk about. We're talking about stability of the product and also um, the greater resonance contributor. Okay. So let's talk about how temperature is going to play a role in, um, in what type of products are going to be formed here. So it brings something up that we have to talk about that we're going to see more than once this semester. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this a little bit. So, okay, step one is the same step for the 1-2 and the 1-4 addition. Right, so in other words, we're going to get this carbocation here, or through resonance, this carbocation there. So it's the step, the second step, whether the bromide goes to position two or whether it goes to uh, position four that dictates what reaction occurs, right? The one, two or the one, four addition. All right, so here's what happens. Um, because this first structure here is what we said was the more stable of the resonance intermediate structures, right? We drew those three structures out. Because it's more stable, it's going to have here a lower activation energy. That's your Ea12. Okay, it's a lower activation energy than forming the product at the 1,4 position, right? Because it's more stable. So the very first thing that happens here is we're going to come over and we are always going to form this product. So it forms the fastest because it has the lowest activation energy. So we call this the kinetic control or kinetic product. All right, so that thing happens first. Now, uh, again, just to point out here, let's just make a little note over here on the side about temperature. Okay. So at low temperature and for us our book calls us 80 degrees Celsius All right we'll just say here the faster reaction prevails All right so that means it is the kinetic product okay so if you saw this reaction and it said negative 80 degrees, then your product would be the product of, the, of this first carbocation. So what is that product? Well, remember we just drew it out. So that's your bromo group here and your bromo group there. Okay. All right. So that, that's what happens if we have a very cold reaction. Now, if we have a uh, a reaction that's a little warmer. So then let's make another little bullet down here. So what if we have um, something, and I, again, our book uses 40 degrees here. So, so at 40 degrees Celsius, what happens? Well, no matter what, the very first thing that happens is that we come over here and we form this. Okay. So that's the very first thing that happens. So I'm just going to write a number here, number one. Right, so the blue is representing what's going to happen here on the, the, this thermodynamic side. Now, but because the temperature, and this is the, the tricky thing, because the temperature is warmer, this molecule down here, right, these guys, they can actually kick off the bromide and reform the intermediate. Okay, so then... The second thing that happens here is we can come back over here, and I'm just going to draw this a little bit bigger. You can, we can swing back down, and we can reform the carbocation. So I'm going to make a note here. Reform carbo 
cation. And we can do that because this reaction is more reversible at this higher temperature. Okay, so then once we come over here and we reform this carbocation, right, we have at, at some percentage, we have this second guy who's less stable hanging out, right? And every so often, because we have this higher temperature, we have enough energy now to overcome this larger activation energy, right? Because remember, activation energy for this pathway to the right is larger, right? That number is larger, that Ea is larger than going towards this kinetic, the left side. So that higher temperature enables us then to come over. So number one, again, we're coming over, it's the kinetic. Number two, we reform the intermediate. And then number three, we're swinging down here and we end up being the thermodynamic product. We call that thermodynamic control sometimes. And that product, as we saw on the previous page, is this plus that. Those are the two thermo products. Now, they're lower in energy on this side because the product is more substituted, so the alkene is more stable. Now, if you keep the temperature not too high, then you come down here and it's like you're getting thrown into a well, you can't jump back up. If you, if you cranked up the temperature higher, then yeah, this could go backwards and you could come over and form that intermediate again, but you don't, you don't crank up the temperature that high. All right, so then at 40 degrees here, um, and sometimes we'll just have an arrow with an up T like this. So at a higher temperature, again, 40 degrees Celsius is what we're looking for. Um, the, thing, the, the process here is first, the kinetic forms, right? Then we reform the carbocation. And lastly, we form the thermodynamic product, okay? Now, uh, one last little note here, and we'll get a chance to play around with this a little bit, is sometimes students just get stuck in thinking this, right? So it says that the one four over here, in this case, is the thermodynamic control. So what's true all of the time is that this is the thermodynamic product. But it doesn't always have to be one four. So sometimes the thermo can be one two. It just depends on like the actual problem. And the same thing is true over here. When you look over here, this says one two, but really um, it's just the kinetic side. So it's often in our book almost exclusively gonna work out that the one two is the kinetic and the one four is the thermo, but that's not always the case. So what I wanna do over here on the side is a little sidebar with you guys. And just, let's just say this, that the one, two is not always kinetic, although it is most of the time. Um, and the one, four is not always the thermo. 